zoological website Fauna of Belarus and Minsk Foreign Languages Center Mir Bez Granits World Without Borders present Spiders and their manners. There is a net made of webs hanging on the meadow amid the grass. This net is a threat to the flies. A big spider has weaved it. Of course, all of us know that spiders weave webs. They weave for their own benefit. Funny spiders. They give us a lot of joy in autumn and spring. Competent and observant people admiring air threads can predict the weather for the nearest period, even for the coming summer. Some people can predict winter with the help of spiders, but many of us are afraid of these eight-legged creatures. Why? Perhaps in the childhood they had the first fairy tale called Boldly Buzzing Fly. It shows a spider who wanted to kill the heroine of the fairy tale. But this is natural. Spiders hunt for flies. They weave a web for this purpose. Spiders are interbred animals of the arachnid class. Their relatives are Opilionis and Acari. Spider's body is divided into forebody and hind body. There are four pairs of legs on the forebody and a few pairs of eyes at the front. On the lower side of the hind body there are spinnerets from which spider gives off web. Spiders use web to make trapping nets, weave shelters and also to make cocoons for egg protection. The web is very strong. Look, it's a mass emergence of mayflies. Some of them get into the spider's web in great amount. Imagine how strong the web is. If the thread of the trapping net were as thick as a pencil, it could stop a small plane on the fly. Pay attention to this spider. Who is he looking for? Maybe prey. The victim is found and he makes a dash against it. But it is not just a prey. This is another spider, but small one. Jumping spiders are unrivaled virtuoso among predators. Look, he still controls the situation around while eating. Is there any prey left? Or is a larger predator approaching? And maybe a rival has invaded his territory. The fact is that many spiders are jealously guarding their territory against conspecific invasion. In this area, the spider has a hunt. The more he eats, the faster it grows, and the more his chance of survival is. That is why they fight frequently. If a spider is larger than the other one, it just kills and eats the affected rival. Therefore, we see that cannibalism is common among spiders, that is, they eat their own kind. By the way, in arachnofauna of Belarus, there are spiders who eat almost specifically of their own kind. For example, a family of Mimetidae. If spiders are nearly equal in size, the weaker one can escape in the fight for territory. But this doesn't always go without harm. For example, the result of these fights can be the loss of one or more legs. Spiders are very important in nature. Most invertebrates lay many eggs. Nature is wise. If there were no predators, the disbalance would emerge and odds of invertebrates would flood everything. Spiders are also the prey for frogs, lizards, birds and other animals. Spiders weave their webs in meadows, forest edges and clearings. They also run over the ground surface and over the plants searching for prey. In various biocenoses their number is different. 
In books, more than a half of invertebrates living on the surface of the moss are spiders. All spiders can be divided into two groups. Some spiders weave trapping webs, others do not. Permanent trapping webs are weaved by females. The males also hunt prey using web. But when the time comes, they start searching for the opposite sex for reproduction. When the male finds the female trapping web, he starts to send signals using the web. The female feels special web vibration and hurries to its edge. If the female is not ready to mate, the male will get no good from it. At best, she will simply hunt him away. But the male must have patience. And sooner or later, the female gives up. Mating process can take a long time. Note that in most families there is sexual dimorphism. Males are smaller than females and their hind body is not as big. If you look closely, you will notice that the male's pedipalps of mouth parts are larger than the females. Their ends, copulatory organs, look like boxing gloves. These spiders are of another family. Having found the female strapping web, the male stands on its edge for some time. Then he slowly approaches the female, not to evoke aggression. He is lucky, the female is ready to mate. The spider's copulation process is quite interesting. The male carries the semen into special small containers made from the web and then uses pedipalps to carry it to the female's reproduction organs, thereby spermatizing it. During some time, the eggs will start to grow inside the female's hind body and it will become large. At this time, the females are slow and often simply hide. For this purpose, a rainy web the leaves and grass together in the form of the dome. They wait for the maturation of eggs inside of it. Some spiders don't need to hide under the leaves. For example, this species has very well developed protective coloring, so the female is almost invisible on the dried plant. Females of other families can just sit along the stem of herbaceous plant. Their elongated bodies look like warts or appendages of the plant. At the end of their lives, female spiders lay their eggs in cocoons protected by web. There can be several hundreds of eggs inside of them. Females hide their cocoons in various protected and inaccessible places in tracery of branches and leaves, under the bark of trees and stubs, as well as under the stones. It should be noted that the size and color of the cocoons of various families is very different and in this case performs the function of camouflage against the background of a green leaf. Young spiders come out of the cocoon soon. The kids stick together for a while, weaving a common net. Despite this fact, they do not hunt together. In most cases, after the first molting, they disperse in all directions and weave their first tiny nets between the grass blades and small branches. As you know, spiders secret spider web for a variety of purpose. Settled spiders weave web to catch insects. Spiders are located in the center of the web or on the edge in the shelter. Spiders that sit in ambush keep their feet on the signal silk threads all the time. If the victim gets into the trap, the web will let the predator know about it by vibrating. The web form is different. Arrhenius spiders that live in our forests weave large vertical web. They can be found in high grass, between the trees, as well as on branches and elsewhere. There are often numerous trapping webs of Arrhenius on young pines. 
These webs are easy to see in the early morning when they are covered with dew as well as after rain. Now you see how effective the trapping web is. The unlucky bug crawling on a plant falls into it. A watchful spider feels it, rushes to the victim and begins to web it. Now the predator is full, that's why he stores the prey till the next feeding. Notice how the Arrhenius cleans his paws. He sold his feet while wrapping his prey in a web. This is unacceptable if he wants to move freely without sticking to the trapping web. Tetragnethidae weave similar trapping webs. However, unlike Arrhenius, the center of their trapping web is not weaved round and has a hole. Furthermore, these spiders are not as large. They hunt for medium and small insects. Spiders of the Linifidae family have quite unusual trapping webs. They have the following form. The horizontal valence is fixed by vertical threads on top and from below. When an insect flies into the vertical threads, it becomes entangled and falls on the horizontal valence. And the spider that sits under the valence catches the unlucky prey. Another family has even more unusual trapping web. These are falsidae. The threads of their trapping web are located in absolutely random way. But they are not less effective. These spiders are very rare in the wild nature of Belarus. Most often they can be found in the house in a dry and well-heated place. It's amazing how such small spiders with such huge and bulky legs are able to orient quickly and navigate through the trapping web. They are very similar to their spider relatives, Opilionis. A small body and long legs like stilts give them similar appearance. When a larger predator attacks them, he most often grabs their legs. Their legs are quite breakable. Besides, when the leg breaks off, it begins to shrink convulsively and distracts attention. Yes, the spider lost a leg, but he survived. In the wild, there are a Agelinidae. Their trapping web is located in the bottom of the plants, in the grass, bushes, as well as in the moss. It is horizontal and extends in the center into a long tunnel. Agelinidae are ambush predators. They eat small insects. Their webs catch not only flying insects, but also insects which run on blades of grass and bushes. The spider sits inside the tunnel or on its edge. As soon as vibration comes from some part of the web, the spider detects it immediately, runs to that side, rushes to the prey, paralyzes it and drags it to the shelter. Some Agelinidae have adapted to live in the dark corners of the human homes. Domestic house spider is one of them. Do not worry, it is not dangerous for human health. His trapping web is of triangular shape. It is located horizontally. It ends with a tunnel with a long tube that is open in the bottom. The spider hides there. In case of danger, he runs through the lower end of the tube. There are spiders which don't weave trapping webs. They move actively while hunting and grab prey from the ambush. They use web to make a cocoon for eggs and also to be fixed in position as if in a safety net. Spider families of Pisoridae and Lycosidae perhaps have the simplest method of hunting. When they see the prey, they catch it in two or three jumps. Lycosidae have an interesting feature. They take care of the offspring. After the release from the egg, young spiders sit on the female's hind body under her protection. 
No doubt that Salticidae are the most sharp-sighted and quick spiders. They look for their prey from a distance. Then they approach fast and after that they catch it at a jump. That is why they were given such a name. Sometimes the length of their jump can be about 30 centimeters. They are number one in active hunting, but Thomisidae have the lead in hunting from the ambush. They choose a different strategy. Everything is simple. Their main weapon is camouflage. When changing the location of their hunting, some crab spiders can change their color after a few days. They adjust to the color of the plants. They pick their hunting field, taking into account their tendons of insects. More often, they choose flowers. Bees, wasps and other hymenoptera, and also flies, fly together right to the flowers. The whole essence of the hunt is just sit and wait patiently when the prey comes or flies in. And that's where they won't let them out of their powerful forelegs. They're called crab spiders because of the way they move. They move equally well forward or sideways, like crabs. Females of this family take care of the offspring. When the young spiders come out of the legs, the females tear the cocoons to help small spiders come out. A large number of different spiders live in the wild in Belarus. Even the largest of them do not pose a threat to human life. Still, you'd better not take them in your hands. Firstly, the spider may be hurt through your carelessness and secondly, it can bite painfully. The bite of big spiders that live in our forest is not only painful. Sometimes the dirt from the spider's chelicerae may get into the wound. This is bad for us, as the inflammation may occur. But if you know how to behave with the spiders, you are out of danger. A spider often appears in the religions and myths of different nations. In some places, spider symbolizes diligence and creativity. It's not surprising, as it's just a miracle of evolution to weave such complex and sophisticated nets. Among other peoples, it symbolizes cruelty and greed. It's also not surprising, because spiders can eat large quantities of invertebrates. It's quite interesting that nice observers have learned to predict the weather using spiders. For example, if a house spider weaves a web near the stove, then you should wait for a harsh winter. If the house spider runs, bustles, weaves a web, then it is for a good weather. If he hobbles himself up in a corner with his head to the wall and his back to the room, then it will soon begin to rain. If a long web is flying in autumn, the autumn will be clear and it will be a long time before snowing. If there flies lots of webs in late summer, the autumn will be dry. If early juvenile spiders appear, spring will be warm. If there are lots of webs in spring, the summer will be hot. When the spiders weave their web intensely in summer, arrange a web in the form of a wheel, and it's a lot of web everywhere, the weather will be good. If there are a lot of spiders and they are very active, the weather will be warm and dry. If the spider hides in its shelter, it means that it will be raining. The spider tears the old web, weaves a new one and changes the angle of its location for windy weather. Waiting for a long nasty weather, Theridiidae hide in the hole and start hunting in the heat. If they weave their webs in southern direction, it will be warm. If they weave in northern direction, it will be cold. If the spiders tear the main threads of their web, then it will be a strong wind from the side. But if they start to weave the web in the rain, the rain will be over soon. The web looks amazingly beautiful after rain or in the morning dew. 
is just magical. Round water drops hang on the web as if someone has hung a garland of a sophisticated shape. It's very beautiful when water drops shimmer in the sunlight. The spider's trapping web wears out over time. And when it becomes unfit to use, the spider just throws it away and he can rebuild it when he has left the main threads. For this purpose, he eats the old web, which is digested and is used for making a new one. So, we've met these amazing spiders. Hope you won't be afraid of them anymore. They will help you learn to predict the weather and reveal many secrets of nature. These funny shaggy spiders, let them live and make us happy and also provide benefit to us. You should think by yourself what kind of benefit. The script by Leonid Chumakov and Boris Vorobyov. Translation by Anna Pokhodvenko. Sound design by Timofey Avilin and Dmitry Belkevich. Editors Vladislav Ivanov and Amen Seropian. Videographer Boris Vorobyov. Read by Sergei Kunitz. The dubbed translation is sounded with the support of the School of Foreign Languages, The World Without Borders, Minsk, Republic of Belarus, 2017. Please provide feedback and share your thoughts below the video. Click the like button. Subscribe to the channel Fauna of Belarus and you will be informed of new films about animals.